So what is going on guys, Miracle with Word Tech here and today what we are going to be doing is doing some more C++ videos except this time I'm on the Linux side. So what I'm going to be talking to you guys about is going to be linear link lists. Now if you are planning on doing a CS major then you guys are obviously going to hear about something called a data structure and that's basically how the program is going to organize the data involving the memory so like there's different data structures that are going to suit you best so i'm going to do four or five videos on the data structures as a whole uh, i can do them with classes and with structs because it's a little bit different syntax with the class compared to a struct passing in different things who has uh who has accessibility what like say for instance in a class uh typically you'll have an adt and you'll have your main the adt will be having a private and a public sec section for the class, sorry. Typically that's how it'll be. And on the public section, you'll have a wrapper function that calls your private section that passes in, say like your node star head, but say like your professor like mine, uh, all your parameters and your functions can not tell the user or the client, which would be like the main side, the UI side, what you're passing in. So that's when you're gonna wanna use a wrapper function. But in this case, you're gonna just wanna use a wrapper function for like just regular structs when you want to do certain things so for the first uh episode i guess i'm going to be using recursion rather than iteration because i feel like the standard is going to be uh recursion especially when you go on for your cs majors you're going to want to be knowing know how to use recursion so i am taking a class right now and it's basically building it's basically like a data structures class over the summer but for instance i'm going to give you guys let me compile everything um I already get the directories, but this is assuming that you guys have your own directories already or you just want to know how to do just basic linear link list stuff. So a look at linear link list, you can see right here, uh, what my linear link list has right now is just basically a bunch of numbers and you're working with a list of integers. So whenever you want to access something, it's going to be head arrow, whatever, because you know your node star head is going to be accessing through the struct and you want to use that operator. So going into it, we're gonna just do the basics for today. So the basics for today is we're gonna start off by counting. So we are going to have a function called counting and then we're gonna pass in node star head. And as if you can see in main, we have our node star head equals null here. And then these are the four functions that we have. We have a build, display all, display all again, and then the destroy, which is basically our destructor to clear out our memory. And yes, if you're thinking about why would you want to clear out memory, you will see later on that you are going to want to know how to deallocate all your memory so you don't have memory leaks and ruin your PC. So the big thing is typically when you get into a data structures class, your professor is going to want you to know how to use your return type. So for instance, since we're counting, obviously you want to return an integer. You don't want to return a Boolean or a char or a pointer or blah, blah, blah. Specifically, we're going to be returning an integer for this problem. So after you declare it into your dot h, and this is assuming that you already know already basically C++ programming, you're just now getting into different data structures and using recursion. So we're just going to make, let me uh, change the name to this, and we are going to be using, calling it counting. So the basic way that you want to be counting. So Whenever you do, um, the easiest way for me learning recursion is that you need to have your base cases. So think about in a linear link list, your basic case is that you have no list at all. So if you just have a single list, if you have no list at all, which would be just this, right? You have no list at all, if not head. That means head is null, you have no list. The best thing you want to do is just get out of there. Uh, you don't want to recurse to the next because if you try to access an old pointer or do you reference an old pointer you set call and we don't want to do that and this is also a stopping condition for us too so if not head you return zero that means you have no nodes at all on your linked list otherwise we want to return calling the function value which would be counting and then head arrow next because we have the next pointer over here inside of our struct which means it's pointing to our next node into our list we want to call it on head next plus one because we are counting so basically let me rewrite that so it makes a little bit more sense for people because sometimes it will screw people up 
so bam what we are going to end up doing on this function here is this so if we don't have a head then we just want to get out right we have no other list to work with if we do this line right here that means we are going to recursively go into the next or we're going to pop off to this we're going to go to the next stack frame and we are going to recurse to the next iteration with head next counting our nodes that we visited so if we do return one plus counting head next that means we are going to be returning an integer value for this counting and then we're going to continue one plus every time we visit a node so now when we go into our wrapper function we're going to want to check if not head this is going to be the function that we call first and then all we need to do is we just need to, we need to return counting which is this function and we just have to pass in head which means that every time we go into it we're going to call this function when we hit wrapper so we, ret we do return counting head and then we go into here basically we're going to count each node so since int wrapper is an integer return value we can be able to return a number and to catch that number it's really simple actually we just do int count equals the function call which would be wrapper or i'm gonna just declare it as zero just not do anything tricky and then here we'll just do a couple new lines new line and then now what you can just do is you can just do up here count gets the value of whatever wrapper returns so after we do that you have to pass in head because that's the parameters for wrapper and then after that what you can just do is you can see out counts and line and then see out new line just to make it neater boom okay so let's just break this down real quick pretty basic so int counting is gonna if we have if not head then we get out i'll try to comment some stuff get out otherwise let's count our nodes and then after that we basically get out we return the value up to here and then it also returns the value for wrapper so when we get into the main we call our build our display and then after that we have a count up here which equals zero but then after that we set count to the function call which means that we're going to get the return value or catch the return value uh, i can't type today turn value and then we're just going to see out the return value we're going to see out the variable so let's compile and make sure all of this works so everything compiles if we do an a dot out you can see that right here is going to be the value that we returned all right let's just do this make it a little bit nicer for you guys we can do uh, uh, one two number of nodes boom easy enough oh messed that up one second So bam, number of nodes, we have eight nodes. So we have successfully actually counted up a linked list. So now there's now you can do some other tricky stuff. So say that you have a professor or whatever. So say like you go into an interview, right? Or like, for example, you have something like I have called like a proficiency demo, which you have to go pick a coding question, code in front of the professor. If you get it wrong, you automatically fail the class and you have to do it twice a term, blah, blah, blah. So say you get this right, you're like in an entry level data structures class, very entry level, and your professor tells you, count all the data that is not, or that is like an even data member. member. So basically you can do the same exact thing, just add an if statement. So if head arrow data, module, modulus operator, if you don't know what that is, that's basically gonna give us a return value telling us you wanna count it pretty simple right now if you don't so basically we're only going to end up traversing if you leave it like this we're only going to end up traversing once we have hit 
like an uh, once we hit an even number, which we don't want to do. We only want to count and traverse when we find an even number. But if we don't find anything, we just simply return calling the function value head next, but we don't count anything. So just to run through right here, so Can't spell today, sorry about that. So right here, so this base case, you always need to have this case. You always have to check if there's something in the list because if not, that can be bad. If hetero data modulus two is not equal to zero, we wanna count, or sorry, if it is equal to zero, we wanna count. And then if it's not, just return continue on. We don't wanna count anything because it's not an even. So if we go on to run this, So I got the number three. If we have one, two, three, we have three even numbers. So that works out fine. Now I want to just kind of keep this video short and sweet because there's 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 easy stuff when it comes to linked list recursion, and there can be complicated stuff with it. Now the recursion, I like recursion best. If you are taking a CS class or you're doing a CS major, I have no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. You're gonna end up seeing something with recursion. So you might as well pick it up now. For me, recursion is much better than an iteration. If you try to do this with iteration, you're easily looking at probably, I don't know, 10 lines of code, and that's minus like the spaces here. If you see two, four, five lines of code just using recursion, which is really nice. So we can go on to another really basic thing. So Another basic, I guess, thing would be we can just do a delete all function. So I would say like you get this problem, right? And it's delete all the nodes, return the value of how many nodes you deleted. So we are going to make a function called delete all. Now, this is me assuming, you know, basic C++, pass by value, pass by reference. Uh, you know, things about classes and structs. I don't have to go over that. Now, if you do this in a proficiency demo and you do a delete all, obviously if you know C++ and you're looking at me, what am I doing? You know exactly then you know exactly that I'm doing something wrong. And you need a pass by reference when you're updating the list. So remember when you're ever physically doing something to the list, whether it's adding, deleting, you always have to pass by reference. And now with pass by reference, it's going to be actually getting the, you're going to the address, you're getting the address, you're adjusting the address, you're not, you're not passing in a copy of the alias like we are doing here with the node star head. Counting, you don't need to pass by reference, you're not adjusting the address, you're not doing anything, you're just simply counting. So now with the delete all, we're going to do the same thing over here, we're going to make the function declaration int delete all node star ampersand address of head and then after that boom we declared it so now with the linear link list you really need to draw stuff out when it comes to a link list okay very extremely you have to draw it out now i'll put an overlay video of what i'm talking about here so with the linked list the best possible thing you can do is draw things out every the thing that i read on in a book before is you know that you've become a good programmer when you actually don't touch the computer, when you're actually starting straight on a piece of paper with scratch paper, you're drawing out ideas. Now, all the exams and interviews that I've done that have like an oral thing like this, believe it or not, I don't touch the computer and I don't touch like the whiteboard code part probably for at least 30 minutes until I plan out what I'm going to do. So for an int delete all, think about this. When you're deleting something and you're using recursion or iteration, you need something to delete the list right if you do delete head like this you're gonna lose your list like that so it will say you know you're gonna abort the list or it's either gonna say something about the list is empty but the list is really not empty if you do delete list you're gonna delete the head of the list wiping out the rest of the list because everything is connected to head right head is the main guy so what we could do is we can do something like this we summon or we create a node star temp right but this is just going to be a temporary pointer that's going to hold on to the look it's basically the thing of it is a look ahead pointer the temporary is going to hold on to heads neck so it's going to hold on to the second node while we delete head which that's not a big deal right because guess what we have the rest of the list okay temporary is going to be holding on to the rest of the list 
while we delete head. So we delete head, we do head equals temp, which basically means, okay guys, we deleted head, we're gonna set head to temp, so we're now setting head to the second pointer, which means that we're reconnecting our list kind of, and then we do return one plus, because we wanna count how many deleted, and then we do delete all, now, rather than passing in head next, since we want to work on the head, we're going to pass in head. We're not going to pass in head next. So let's go over this real quick. If not head, our very simple base base case. Base case. If there's nothing there, we return zero. We want to get out. So we get out of our list. <clears throat> if not, we can assume we have a list. And basically... If we have a node star temp equals head, or actually, you know what? Before that, what if we have, what if we have a single list, right? If not head returns zero. Technically, that is the case, right? But luckily here, this is gonna have us cover. So node star temp equals head arrow next. So if we do a delete head and head equals temp, this is exactly what we're doing, okay? And I'm gonna be drawing this out. Head arrow next, so temp equals head arrow next. That means temp gets the second pointer, or gets the second node. Boom. We delete head, which is the first node in our list. But then after that, we summon head, or we assign head to temp. Making it so that head is now the second node of our list. Oh, I can't type today, sorry about that. Assign head to temp, making it the second node of our list. And then we do our recursive call with counting. Now, when we go up to here, we're going to do this. The wrapper is going to do the same exact thing. We're going to be passing in delete all. Delete all. Sorry about that. With head. And then after that, we're going to change this guy to pass by reference. Although I believe you don't have to pass head by reference, but this is just the way I've done it. And then we can save our function declaration. And then we're going to go into our main and call this function. So we're going to do, we're going to call count on wrapper, the same exact thing. Number of nodes, we can say deleted. Boom, boom, go ahead and compile using G++, and boom, number of nodes deleted, you can see the list contains 11 of items, the number of lists deleted 11, the list is now empty, yay, we have an empty list now, so like I said before, you can do tricky ways, so basically think of this, you want to just delete the even numbers, literally you just have to add an if statement, if the if statement is correct, we're going to execute this line of code right here if not we want to go to the head next simple as that so what i can do is for the next video we can go into more kind of they're not necessarily harder algorithms but different ways of thinking so like over here i have a delete last two and you can see i have a counter and i have a head next uh delete last that's not technically hard uh there's like finding displaying every other insert right before remove all just kind of different things like that. We can go into more sort of more harder algorithms. These algorithms aren't hard. These are just more of like you have a full list. It's either you have a list, you don't have a list. Go ahead and delete. There's nothing else to it. But guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video of C++ linear link list using recursion. Uh, I can do more of these videos. Hopefully, I can go through a couple different data structures. Linear link list, arrays of linear link list, linear, linear link list of arrays. Q's, uh, circular link list, doubly link list, binary search tree, AVL tree, all these different kind of trees I can go over, just leave in the comments below. So many different data structures to choose and so many videos to make. So guys, this has been Mirko with WordTech. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.